What's up with y'all tonight? My tank is completely empty. I'll be honest. I had a had a pretty busy schedule lately. And on top of that, when I went to visit my boy this past weekend, why he was hosting a bug that he so graciously decided to transfer into dear old dad. And I was on the mend. Um, normally when I'm on my vegan shtick, um, I, I don't get sick very often. I mean, I, I don't get sick that much at all. But, yeah, man, he hit me, he hit me with the one-two with that one, buddy. And I didn't sleep last night. Today, I think I almost passed out about three or four times, man, to be honest. Might have been more than that. But when there's work to be done, when you power through, I swear to God, God has to be looking out for me today because I still would have been powering through what I'm trying to complete. Were it not for the weather changing and the skies darkening to the point that I couldn't see what I was doing anymore. At that point, I decided to disengage Stop by the store, pick up a few items, and as I came out of the store, lo and behold, the sun was shining. It was just enough to get me away from the work, and I made it home in just enough energy, just enough energy to cook something to eat, drag myself into the shower very slowly, hook up my gear, and get ready to shoot. I shoot these on Mondays and Wednesdays. That's my commitment. I honor my commitments. I strive to be excellent in everything that I do. Not, not for self-idealizing reasons, but because, well, I think everybody should want to be excellent. You should want to make an excellent impact on others around you and, and the world at large. But when I tell you I'm beat, there's nothing in the tank right now. Nothing. Add it to that, using the avatar perspective, it actually does burn up a bit of mental energy, or it can. So, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, by the grace of God. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Hopefully I'm dialed in enough to be as effective as I possibly can. You know, this Derek Chauvin guy, he just got, uh, he just got sentenced for the murder of George Floyd. And not sentenced, he got convicted. I guess the sentencing will come a bit later on. But it raises an interesting question. You know, a lot of times people, they talk about, you know, how terrible police officers are. It doesn't, it doesn't really get to the root of what's happening. You know me, I'm all about mechanism. I'm all about exploring the what, whys, and hows behind how events come to pass and forms emerge and whatnot. You look at this toxic police culture. And let's 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 just be brutally clear. These these people were hand selected by those who consider themselves to be the overseers of men. They were hand selected for specifically for their cowardly inclination. If you recall in my work, a coward is a person who is deathly afraid of reality, who instead of facing reality, um, either chooses to barricade themselves within the inner story and or the identity, or they are aggressive and they go around and try to forcibly coerce everything to match their inner story. When you have the passive cowards, then you have the people who are scared of anything that doesn't reflect them back to them. And then 
on the aggressive coward side, you, it's the same thing, except they try to make things conform to them. They try to beat the world up and make the world fit into their little boxes so they can feel tough, so that they can feel powerful. What is a culture? A culture is basically a collective identity belonging to a group of people. When you have a culture, a culture basically sums to, this is how we are. This is who we are. This is what we do. That's a culture. Whenever you belong to a culture, whenever you belong to a culture, you see the world through a lens of, 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 of tribalism. Necessarily, you necessarily see everything through a lens of tribalism and it's always gonna to fall to us versus them. Whenever anything falls to us versus them, then whoever holds that perception, whoever holds that tribal outlook, whoever is the ideologue belonging to a culture, why they assume that they are inherently good. They believe that they are good. When I was a kid, you know, and hip hop was, I want to say virgining, but it's like when it was reaching its height of popularity. Anytime I came across a white person who showed that they were down and they liked the Fugees or Wu Tang Clan or something like that, I always felt a special kinship. I always felt empowered in some strange way like they recognize the value of part of what makes me who I am they recognize the value of our collective identity and it makes you feel not only safe but it sort of invigorates you and gives you this sort of added added incentive to try and indoctrinate them further. But that's what it is. It's your collective identity. That's what a culture is. Now, see, the thing is, when you're an ideologue, when you belong to a culture, when you allow cultures to think for you, they necessarily separate you from reality. They necessarily create a circumstance wherein you have to choose listening to people or listening to reality. You have to choose between listening to your echo chamber and listening to people tell you that you're good and that you're better than others, and that you deserve special privileges, and to do and take as you please, or you listen to reality. Toxic police culture, especially here in America, they get paid to hunt humans. They get paid to hunt humans. When you kill somebody you 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 necessarily violate a major like one of the like major tenets of, of of reality itself like everything in reality everything in nature when or if it does kill it kills for a purpose humans kill for sport these thugs calling themselves police officers. Oh my God, they're so in so much trouble with reality. Oh my God, from the from the perpetrator level to the instigator level to the to the radicalizer, they're oh my God, like it's bad. The reason why you don't see me speak out on so many social injustice issues because. I already know every single person involved from top to bottom, they are in for shit. It's going to be horrible.
It's interesting. When you associate with people who constantly spin stories and in which they are the good guy and they create a bad guy and then a point system for killing bad guys. When you're in such a culture, there's no way for you to not be affected by it. And I was talking about this a, a few weeks back, but, um, you know, I, I had a buddy who's constantly listening to these, this, this platform, this, this personality. And he's listening to this popular personality, and this popular personality is radicalizing him over and over and over again. He goes into these little communities and chat rooms where he has these people reinforce over and over again all these negative messages he keeps feeding himself about this group he holds contempt for. It's only a matter of time. If you are constantly feeding yourself negative information, it's only a matter of time until you snap on somebody who comes from that group because you were looking for a reason to. You were searching for a reason to. If you're a corrupt police officer, not even corrupt police officer, if you are in a in 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 just police culture, and police culture, they brag about and laugh about and joke about murdering people for sport. And you take those messages in over and over and over again. It's only a matter of time until an opportunity presents itself for you to act on a message you've been feeding yourself the entire time. It's a matter of time. You're a ticking time bomb. If I sit around here and I'm like, I, I hate women, I hate women, I hate women, I hate women, women should this, women should that, women should this, women should that, then all of a sudden... I find myself in a situation where I'm allowed to unilaterally aggress against a woman. I'm going to violate her in whatever way. I've, I've, I've agreed with myself. I should be able to. You have these co corrupt agents. These people who have these pure, they've nurtured within themselves this, this dark energy, this this deep level of corruption where everything is justified as long as they're the good guys and everyone else is bad. If you're the good guy, then you can perceivably do anything. You're entitled to do whatever you want so long as you can spin the story that you're good. That's the way it works in society. It doesn't work that way in reality. Reality does not recognize your status beliefs. I don't care what culture you come from. You can call yourself chosen, special, whatever. Reality does not recognize your status beliefs. Period. Every impact you make carries a weight. It carries a consequence according to how the system itself works it doesn't matter what you call yourselves if you if you if you say we're the few the proud and the brave does that does that moniker does that does that 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 sort of i don't know what you call it labeling you've given yourself does that change what you do in reality or how you impact on reality no your status beliefs mean nothing. Nothing. Yet we have these people from all these corrupt cultures around the world trying to live their best life at the expense of everyone else. It's the story of me. It's the story of us, but really me. To the tune that 
they're allowed to do whatever they want. So long as whatever they want is convenient to their inner story and their desires. A couple years ago, uh, you know, not even a couple years ago, it's still going. You have these prosperity ministers. These, these, these prosperity churches. They run around telling parishioners, God wants you to be rich. Jesus wants you to be rich. I heard one guy say that he would line up all the people who didn't donate in order to multiply their money and shoot them outside the church. See, in reality, in reality, you know that has absolutely nothing to what Nothing to do with what Jesus taught. Jesus said it's harder for... It's easier to get a camel through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Yet you have these rich pastors telling these rich sycophant ideologues or these wannabe rich sycophant ideologues that they can believe whatever they want that they get to create Christianity according to how they see fit. They get to create and interpret Jesus' word however they want, so long as it results in them benefiting. And that became the culture of that cult, of those cults. It's so many of them. It's so many. Somebody comes along and they just, just say the exact opposite of what Jesus said but so long as they toss the word Jesus in to their sermon and dance around with a few scriptures, there you are shouting and waving your hands because they did not inform you. They did not teach you. They simply told you what you wanted to hear. They told you something comfortable and convenient. And you bit because you listened to people over reality. You want to know what Jesus said? Go, 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 go read. You know you have to read the full gospel scriptures. Just read the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 pretty much undoes Christianity entirely. It, 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 it invalidates the entire faith system in one chapter towards the beginning of what Jesus was talking about. 6, 7... Five, six, seven, eight. Book of Matthew is a good book. You should read it. Like, read it. Don't let someone tell you stories about it or give you some convenient interpretation or and or interpretation that's convenient to what you want to do. But that's what culture is, right? It's a bunch of people flocking around you telling you that you deserve... To have what you desire. And that everything should be comfortable and convenient to you and yours. And that the other people, they're the ones who need to change, not us. No, we stick to our traditions. In reality, you know murdering people is wrong. Period. Period. You know how you know? Because you're imbued with a sense of empathy. If someone were to come along and murder your daughter or your son, you you would be outraged. You'd you'd want you'd want blood. Yet you look at the hue of another person's skin and all of a sudden you have this status belief in your mind that says, Our lives are more important than theirs. We should be able to kill them with impunity in society, in stories. That might fly. In reality, no. You made an impact. You're, 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 you're ponying up for that. Big time. In stories, in society, you can tell yourself, Hey, we're better than these people so we can poison them and bomb them and steal from them. In your cultural narrative, yeah. When you hang out with cultures and you hang out with people who reinforce this notion that you are somehow 
superior to others and as such entitled to live and benefit at their expense, then of course you're going to believe that. Of course. In reality, no, nothing works like that. Parasitism is hated by reality itself. It's hated. It's an extension of corruption. When I say hate it, it's hated. If you're an agent of parasitism or an agent of corruption, then you have the worst enemy of all to have. And what's worse is that it's a lot of really, I don't want to say good, but it's a lot of decent people who end up getting caught up in shitty cultures. And in trying to demonstrate their goodness to the group, and in trying to demonstrate their goodness to society at large, they end up picking up some really, really, really toxic outlooks and some awful behaviors. The great irony of living for a culture is that in trying to be a good person, you end up proving how bad and how shitty you truly are. Think about when Jesus was getting killed, right? They're marching him through the streets and they're whipping him, and casting stones and spitting. What was going through those people's minds? Now, in reality, in reality, watching someone be tortured and punished and injured, it should, it should trigger something within you where you want to intervene. Where you, you, at the very least, can't look. What would make a motherfucker laugh and cheer as someone was being injured and humiliated? This is what's happening at the cultural level. When people are more tuned in to the voices of those around them than they are to reality itself, they necessarily become agents of corruption. It's not subjective. It is absolute. All of these corrupt law enforcement agents, they're corrupt to the core. They celebrate injuring, hunting, intimidating the smallest spot, one of the smallest populations in the country for their own amusement and satisfaction. They spin stories so that they are justified in taking their anger and frustration out on this targeted population or populations. They'll cling to any myth that gives them that license to keep their finger on the trigger. Because they don't they don't fear for their lives. They're looking for an opportunity to live out a fantasy. Something that is praised from within their corrupt culture. When I say you guys are in so much trouble, I'm not even, I mean, oh my God. Oh my God. I I I don't even like looking at what was about to happen to you. Racist, every, every single one of you, you are, you're fucked. You're fucked. And your vanity, your pride, is only making it worse. Speaking of pride, there's a group of people I've known for a long time. Known for a long time. I watch you all dance past me. I watch you hold up in your pride. Your little culture of dissent. Refusal to acknowledge, refusal to engage 
I watch you. Your pride, it will be your downfall. And this goes to people from every culture. I tell people to get away from cultures often because cultures corrupt. When you, cultures, they reinforce the identity. To reinforce the identity is to reinforce vanity. To reinforce vanity is to reinforce pride. It's a vicious cycle. And through pride, narcissism, competition, and aggression. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, this pride, the sense of collective pride, a refusal to consider anything that says you can't have whatever you want or do whatever you want or take whatever you want. You're not trying to hear anything other than you're right and you deserve things. What if it's reality itself telling you you can't do that? You're going to knuckle up. You're going to buck back. Is that what you're going to do? You created this enemy. You've created these imaginary enemies out of nowhere. All these... Social dragnets to flush one person out who doesn't even dislike you. Who simply says, you can't have whatever you want or do whatever you want. This is a system. It doesn't begin and end with your interest. Revolve around what you want to do or feel or don't feel like doing. Learn the system before the system finds its way to you. The entire message, a short sentence. Don't try to learn the system on your terms. You're working through idealism. And through idealism, you're going to come up short because the system itself, the mode itself, is fundamentally flawed. Created a whole enemy because someone sees reality in perfect pitch, and the only thing that they're telling you is that, hey, this is a system, not what you make it. There are things that can and cannot be done. If you do things that should not be done, there's a consequence. It's the whole message. The whole thing. Learn the system. You can't see it? Hey, you got somebody here who can show it to you. Explain it to you in real time. Literally everything that I've been trying to do. Show you, hey, there's a mechanism to all this, guys. You might not want to... No, get him. Block him. Stop him. He said we can't have what we want. Eh, he's evil. What if reality itself is telling you you can't have what you want? You ready to knuckle up? Lording it over humans and lording it over others is completely different things. But if you listen to your culture, and this applies to all cultures, all cultures individually, if you listen to your cultures over listening to reality, you fuck yourself every time. When you choose to listen to people over listening to God, you fuck yourself every time. People, at best, all they have is knowledge and knowledge systems. Doesn't matter if their knowledge systems pan out according to how you know how to navigate knowledge systems. They're limited in terms of scale and application. You can get 100% of human discovery to match 100% of human discovery, and it would still be a fraction of a fraction of a percent of a fraction of a whole universal principle.
Pride will get you messed up, man. But back to this verdict. Derek Chauvin case. Back to this verdict. Every, every... Say we got the OJ trial. Every now and again you get a win. But this was a long time and in, in, in the making. Is lose, 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 lose. Break your spirit, break your spirit, break your spirit, break your spirit, break your spirit. One win. And everybody feels like it's some grand. Pardon me. It's some grand accomplishment. A man we watched murdered on film. We saw the man who murdered the man. Finally get, finally get touched by the system and everybody's thinking they won. Y'all remember the OJ verdict? Yeah! I know that this is a tough time for most of us. I know black people more than any, we are tired of being traumatized Tired of being bullied with sensational media. Tired of being exploited. Tired of being underpaid. Tired of just getting white people weaponized against us. Like, I know. I know it's tiring. But you have to have the wherewithal. The mental fortitude. The stamina. So not get sucked into the hype train because... Only thing it does is set you up for that that never ending emotional roller coaster. I think this is justice. And the irony is we watched a man get murdered. And it took someone recording a person they were murdering in order to get the world to pay attention. This Derek Chauvin man, he's a product of a corrupt culture. A culture wherein people fantasize about murdering black people. You ever been in one of those group chats where you see officers talking about killing niggers? You ever seen that? They fantasize about it. They talk about it. They create these scenarios in their minds so that when an opportunity for them to kill someone presents itself, they're at the ready. And see, it's not, it's not just black people. Wait, wait, wait till it's no longer a black and white thing. Then it's just going to be cops versus poor white people. Or in different countries, the poor, the indigent. Give these people... These cowardly people, the power to unilaterally aggress against others with impunity. If you give a coward a weapon, they're going to use it. If you give a coward a weapon, they're going to use it. I don't know if anybody's commenting on the video. Um, last week, for some reason, they... We're not allowing my my comments to uh, go through, so I didn't see till after the uh, podcast was up. But when I tell y'all, y'all are when I tell you these these cowardly people, these aggressive cowards. When I tell y'all, they are in a world of trouble. You don't want no part of what's coming to them. No part.
You practice being a dick. You practice socializing with people who normalize it and tell you it's okay for you to be a dick. You practice hanging around people who encourage you to develop status beliefs and to hold up within them. You practice hanging around people who tell you to self-idealize and that you are superior to others and as such, the judge, jury, and executioner. You're the righteous judge, right? You practice hanging around those people. Just like people practice listening to Kevin Samuels. You practice listening to him. You practice building your identity around the things he says. You practice using his language models to the tune that you become belligerent, aggressive, and intolerant. The same way people do with listening to rhetoric from Ben Shapiro or Jordan Peterson. Ideologues will flock to whoever reflects their inner story back to them and tells them that they are good and that they deserve things and that they were appointed to be righteous judges. When I was growing up, there was this saying, bad association spoils useful habits. That's what cultures do. They corrupt you. There was this scene in one of my favorite movies, A Bronx Tale. It was the kid, Sonny. No, it was the kid. Sonny was the older Italian guy. I forget the kid's name. But the kid, he was in the car hanging with his little hooligan friends who wanted to go and burn up the black neighborhood. And they had some, I forget what you call them, cocktails, the fire cocktails or whatever. Bottles with gasoline and rags coming out of them. These assholes, they just wanted to go and wreck shop. They wanted to take their, their nurtured anger and frustration out on the black community. And they destroyed a shop. They threw, God damn it, I can't think of those. Uh, again, I, I, I don't even know how I'm doing. I'm really blacked out right now. I'm really, I'm, I'm past drunk right now, so I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I haven't drank it, but it's like I'm past the level of drunk right now. The cocktails, what are those called? Anyway, they took it and they threw it into one of the windows of one of the shops. And prior to this, Sonny comes and he grabs the kid out of the car. Hey, you, get out of here. Get, stop, y'all at least stay away from this kid. And he punches one of them in the face. Now, these kids, they were a bad culture. They were trying to indoctrinate this, 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 uh, this, this smart kid and get him to do hood rat shit along with them. They were trying to create their own aggressive culture. Trying to create their own aggressive culture. And this dude, he says, no, you stay away from him. He pulls him out of the car. And that night, all six of those little kids end up dying by their own hand, by their own doing. The little culture they nurtured within their group was toxic. It was corrupt. And, they, and, and in their minds, they were justified. They were the good guys. These black, whatever they call them, they trained themselves to hate black people to the point that they felt justified in attacking them to their own demise. 
That's how every culture works. That's how police cultures work. That's how racist culture works. Yeah, all of it. Cowardly ideologues. I'm going to make you suffer so I can feel powerful. I'm going to take from you so that I can feel superior to you. At a natural level, you know genocide is wrong. At a cultural level, it's subjective. It depends on who's doing it. As long as you're doing it and you can come up with a scenario in which you're the victim, then yeah. Yeah, you, 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 can, you can genocide people. That's no problem. Stories don't fly in reality, though. You can, you can exploit and rob from people because you're the good guys and you were just smarter. If that's the story you tell yourself, has no value, no power in reality whatsoever. It is a system. That system has rules that existed long before this species. Long before the body of this planet, long before the body of this universe. You tell yourselves you can do whatever you want, that you're the good guys and you're the cowboys, everybody else is bad. And you can run all your victimhood narratives over and over and over again. Hey, we have to do this to protect ourselves. We have to, yeah, 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 yeah. You can lie to yourself. You can lie to each other. You can, you can agree to yourselves. You can agree with each other. Your agreements have no impact or bearing on reality as a system. None. Main point I try and communicate to humans. Your agreements, the agreements you make with yourselves and the agreements you make among yourselves and with each other, they have no bearing. They have no power. They have no impact on reality whatsoever. None. And if you're in the habit of listening to people over listening to reality, then you're going to do stupid things like those kids in that car in a Bronx tale. If they were even remotely dialed into reality, no, hey, burning down other people's shit is wrong. Trying to kill people and fire guns at them is wrong. I know it's wrong because I wouldn't want anybody to do that to me or mine. But in a culture, oh... Well, they deserved it. We're the good guys. They're the bad guys. If, they, if, if, if we didn't do it first, then they would do it. Right? Anything's justifiable as long as you're the good guys. As long as you're protecting yourself. Stories don't fly in reality. None of that shit flies. And every negative impact you make and contribute to, it gets charged back to you with unimaginable interest. You clean up your messes or you force reality to clean up behind you, but if reality has, reality has to clean up your messes, oh, you're paying full price times two plus whatever additional costs it take to, 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 to offset any work that had to be done in order to clean up. Your messes. It's not a game. Not the game. <sighs> wow. I got six new comments. Well, not six comments. I got six notifications. I don't know how many of those are pertaining to this video or not. Because for some reason, again... Uh, something is set up in such a way that it won't allow me to see the comments. Huh. Let me see. Hmm. 
I guess I have to reopen it and we'll see how that goes. But uh, so that's where we're at with it. These corrupt cultures, these people allowing corrupt cultures to corrupt them, training themselves over and over again to believe that and see themselves as being superior to others, only creating messes for themselves in reality. Your status beliefs are not recognized. As such, any infraction, any imbalance you create, it necessarily gets charged back to you. It doesn't matter if you're under the spell of corruption. If you make a negative impact, it's charged back to you. Much in the same way that if you killed somebody while you were high on crack, you still got to pay still got to pay the price. Why? Nobody made you smoke the crack. Just like nobody makes you get high on narcissism or high on self-idealizing or high on cultures. These are all options. These are all things you choose to do. If you choose it, you will have your reward. you choose it, you will have your reward. Oh man, my little boy hit me with the one, two. I wish I had got some sleep last night. I think it would have been all good by today. Hopefully tonight I can get some more rest. But I am tired. I almost passed out a few times. I was in the shower, but before I got in the shower, I stood up and I was like, ooh. Fortunately, I have a strong frame of reference, so I was able to catch myself. There's a couple times today where I stood up, and it's so funny because it's like I was looking at my little boy's symptoms over the weekend, and he was just laying on me. He would just lay on me, and he was just like, he, I tried to get him to stand up and eat, and he wouldn't, and he had some vertigo, and I'm like, Wow. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's just because I haven't slept or if that's just whatever bug it was he contracted, but it was amazing. I don't ever feel this bad. Wow, I feel like terrible. I'm surprised I'm able to be lucid through all this. You know, that's something that I, um, I will say I'm, I'm mostly grateful for or, or, or very much grateful for. I mean, even when I'm out of it, I'm still in it. This is me. This is me being um, completely devoid of life. I'm like a zombie right now. I have no mental wherewithal. Like I'm, I'm dead serious. Like right now, even as I am paying attention to how I'm performing right now, this is on a backup generator. And the fact that it's like there's nuance in what I'm saying, there's subtlety and there's there's a, a color in the vocal inflection and um, I go high and low and I'm still able to piece frames together and things of that nature. That's pretty fucking amazing. I'm, I, I mean like, and again, because you're you're only witnessing it from the outside, it probably seems like I'm exaggerating the state and condition that I'm actually in, actually in, but I'm I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I, there's nothing in me. Well, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this is my backup generator, man. Yo, so we have forty nine minutes. You already know what it is. It is your man, Donald King. I'm here to make you sing. We're still trying to do fun stuff. It's a wild ride, guys. I need you to understand something. I didn't sign up for it. It just fell in my lap, so... Best I can do is march it forward. Without fear. A lot of people are like, Man, aren't you scared? 
Aren't you scared to get in trouble for the things you're saying? I'm like, if I was lying, I would be. <laughs> if I was lying, I'd be deathly afraid of being found out or exposed or anger in God or No lies here, guys. None. Hopefully none. I have to correct that. I'm being as honest as I know how to be. And uh, I'm not adding anything to what I see or subtracting anything. I'm just giving it to you straight from the cuff. Yeah, I know it's inconvenient to a lot of your cultural priming in your own inner stories but this is how it goes man it's how it goes obviously i'm shooting this on the facebook live oh my god i just tilted my head and i was instantly able to ready to pass out that's crazy uh well i'm shooting this on facebook live um i even look tired jeez wow is that my face right now bad Shooting this on Facebook Live. Um, you can also catch me on Instagram at Avatar Cycle XIII. It's Avatar Cycle 13. I also post these videos to YouTube, my YouTube channel. Um, check me out there. And I also post content to Medium. Post content to Medium. If you get any sort of benefit out of what I'm doing and you just want to spread the love, you want to salt bay, a boy. You can always hit me up on Donnie King at Cash App. That's D O N I. That's D O N N I. No, D O N N I E K A N G. Donnie Kang. And then also feel free to join the Patreon family. Proceeds go to li building this up to a larger platform. Again, I'm trying to reach as many people as I can before I'm out of this body. Don't know how long I'm going to be in it. And uh, as bad as I feel right now. <laughs> Could be hours, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know it's weird. You know it's weird. I was telling you about this earlier. I um. I I I was I was working on this project. I was working on this project. And um. I I. Got to a point where. I was just completely beaten. But how I'm built is. You don't stop when you're tired. You stop when you're done. I make it so that reality itself has to tell me when I punch my card. So I'm sitting here and as I'm working on this project, which requires daylight just based on the circumstance that I'm working in, all of a sudden, it starts to snow and the skies go so dark that I can barely see what I'm doing. So I wrapped it up for the day. I wrapped it up for the day, went to the store, came outside the store, the sun was shining all over again. Part of me was like, yo, go finish. Other part was like, if, if that's not divine intervention, I don't know what is. Because like, maybe I, maybe I was burning the candle in the middle a little too much. I do that from time to time. It's something I had to work on, but... When you're this thing, your life is your life is crazy. There's no way to prepare for this shit. You show up and do your best and hope it's enough. Anywho, yo, for those of you all who tuned in, I'm not sure if anyone did because for some reason Facebook has it so I can't see comments and interact with interlocutors for the time being. I hope that that resolves itself very soon. I hope that resolves very soon or I figure out some sort of hack or something because uh, mm, I hope it resolves soon is all I'm saying. Yo, uh, shit. Well, what do we got? All right, so let's just do a quick recap, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. 
Cultures will get you in trouble. Cultures will have you listening to people over listening to God. Cultures corrupt people. It doesn't matter if you're talking about the culture of a faith system. It'll corrupt you. It doesn't matter if you're talking about the culture of, 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 of uh, 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 gangsters. It'll corrupt you. It doesn't matter if you're talking about anything, really. Culture will corrupt you. National culture. It'll corrupt you. Racist culture. Oh my God, it'll corrupt you. Like, oh man. Dude, if you're racist, stop. Stop. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you, for, for the love of God, stop. You've made a terrible enemy. Oh man. Oh my God. You have made the worst enemy. It's bad please stop I'm, I'm i'm not even it's not even a challenge i'm just for your sake please be the best person you can be moving forward because you are hated like the level of corruption it takes to reach that level of hatred within yourself reality despises you oh man man it's bad it's bad bad please stop Please, get away from those goddamn cultures. Start interacting with people in real time. Start interacting with reality in real time. Stop trying to live for your ideal self. Stop living for your identity. By extension of your identity, your culture. Sync up with reality. It'll do you right. It's your man, Donald King. I'm out.